Hey everyone, do you need a heater for a greenhouse or other small space? Do you not have electricity out there and don't want to deal with the fire hazard of a propane heater? I'm going to show you how to make a sand battery that runs on solar panels. This is really simple. First, we have a big metal pot. This is actually a cooking pot I got out of a junk heap. 50 pound bag of sand from Home Depot. This was about $6. This is a replacement element for a hot water heater. I'll put a link down below because this is a particular model. People will comment to use the elements from an electric stove, but they don't have the same ratings as this. And I know people will ask if I'm going to drill a hole in the side of the pot and insert this through. No, I am not. Number one, this doesn't have a nut. And number two, I don't want to destroy the pot. Lastly, this is silicon jacketed wire that is made to withstand high temperatures. I learned a year ago, if you use regular per wire, that the insulation will actually melt. And I'm gonna put a cheap thermometer down in the bottom so I can see the temp from down below. Okay, I'm gonna put about three or four inches of sand down in the bottom and then put my temperature probe in. Put my thermometer down towards the bottom and put the heating element in and fill the rest up. I went ahead and used ring terminals on the back side of the heating element for the silicon wire. And now we add the rest of the sand. So now we're filled up. I made a little cardboard lid just to stop this from spilling. And then let's take it outside and plug it into some solar. Let's go. Before we go outside, we need to do some math. So earlier in the video, I said that I picked that heating element for a particular reason, and I'm gonna explain why. So let's talk about Ohm's law. So Ohm's law is voltage equals current times resistance. And there's only two things in here that we really have control over because the resistance of the heating element is fixed. And I happen to know that it's around 15 ohms. So knowing that that's a fixed value, we can kind of work our way backwards. So for example, let's say that we give, we hook up a 12 volt solar panel to uh, the heating element. Let's see what it does. Well, since 15 ohms is fixed, that means that I'm only going to get 0.8 amps worth of pull from the solar panel. Now, the reason why we wouldn't want to do that is because the power that's going to come out of that heating element is going to be very small. So power, which is watts, is amps times volts. So if I take 12 volts times 0.8 amps equals... 9.6 watts, which is nothing. It's like the power output out of a lighter, okay? So instead, I have two 35 volt panels in series to give me around 60 volts. Now, at 60 volts with 15 ohms of resistance means that it will, I will pull about four amps. Okay, so 15 times 4 is 60. And if I do 60 volts times 4 amps, gives me 240 watts of power. And when we go outside and I show you my current meter, this is what I've got. So there is a, a, a really, uh, uh, there's a dynamic here between higher voltage and more power output. And so you kind of have to take your heating element first and work your way backwards to get the most efficiency. If I were to give it 120 volts worth of solar, which would be four of these panels, then they would pull eight amps and I would get 960 watts. And this heating element is rated to a thousand watts. The reason why this works is because the formula doesn't matter whether it's AC or DC. If I give it 120 volts from the wall or 120 volts from solar panel, doesn't matter. 
All right, good morning. It's time. It's about 7.30 in the morning. The sun hasn't quite hit the panels yet, but we're going to get plugged in and get started. So my two panels are in series. Plugged into my current meter and then into my heating element, my bucket of sand. You can see the thermometer in the bottom of the bucket is at 52 degrees Fahrenheit. The top of the bucket is also about 50 degrees. Let's see what happens here. It's now noon and I've got full sun on my panels. So this has been running for about three hours. We've got 60 volts at 3.8 amps for 240 watts. 700 watt hours of power has gone through the last three hours. And let's see what's happening in the bucket. The thermometer that's down in the bottom of the sand has errored out, which means it's greater than 200 degrees. My meat thermometer shows about 120. It's 2 o'clock, so this has been baking a good chunk of the day. Uh, we've got some cloud cover today, so the sun's kind of been coming and going. Sixty-one volts at two hundred and forty watts. Still, we're holding around two seventy. And my meat thermometer shows two hundred and fifty-five. Still climbing. So let's recap here. We took a fifteen-dollar hot water heating element and put it in the bottom of a bucket with 50 pounds of sand and gave it 60 volts at four amps from two 35, 230 volt solar panels. And I was able to, to generate 250 degrees Fahrenheit worth of heat out of that sand over a period of hours. So where would you use this? Um, really, it's for small spaces. This is for a greenhouse, something like that. This is not going to heat your house. This is not going to replace a, a Mr. Buddy heater. But if you need a, an easy way to heat a small space, uh, this is kind of a fun project. So questions and answers. Let's do a lightning round. Number one question I know I'm going to get, why didn't I drill a hole in the pot? Well, number one, I didn't want to destroy the pot. Number two, the heating element doesn't have a nut on it, so there's no way for me to attach it. Number three, it works better when the heating element is kind of in the middle of the sand. You know, it's got some, some mass around it. And if you would have drilled in from the bottom or from the side, it, the heating element wouldn't have been centered. Number two, why don't I use rock wall or some sort of insulation around the bucket? Okay, so this ties into another question I get a whole lot, which is why don't I run vent pipes through the sand and blow air through it? It really depends upon how you are going to utilize this. If the sand bucket is inside the structure that you are wanting to heat then none of that matters because the heat that's inside the sand is going to eventually make its way out to that airspace anyway yes if you put one of those fans on there or blew th hot air through it it might heat faster but it's not gonna heat anymore. You can't create any heat that didn't already exist. If you wanted to put the sand battery outside of the structure and move the heat 
inside the greenhouse, then you would want to insulate it and use a fan and some dryer vent to blow the hot air into the structure, kind of like how an air conditioner works now, where you're trying to move the heat from outside to inside. But if the heat is already inside, then you're not having any sort of benefit by blowing air or things like that. Same thing with putting copper or aluminum slats inside the sand to heat those up. All you're doing is moving the heat from the sand to the aluminum, from the aluminum to the air. So you're, you're, you're just moving the same quantity of, of heat from one material to another. You're not making any more of it. What I have done is the most absolutely dead simple way that you could possibly construct this with the minimal amount of losses. I'm not using batteries. I'm not using inverters. It's just straight, pure resistance. Um, other question is, why don't I use water instead of sand? This comes up a whole lot because water has a higher heat capacity than sand does. Okay, I get that, but I'm still only putting 240 watts coming from that hot water heater element. So I'm, I'm not able to, it won't, the, the medium won't really matter. Um, the other problem with using water is the logistics of its containment, meaning everything has to be waterproof. So all my connections become different and it just becomes logistically much more challenging because now everything's got to be waterproof. Sand is inert and so it's pretty simple. Oh, the other big question that I get is why don't I use the, uh, the element from an electric stove? If you go back to a year ago when I was doing this, I actually tried that on video number three. The reason why it didn't work is because the ohm rating of the, the stove elements was wrong. And so I wasn't getting the maximum amount of power into them from my panels and there wasn't really anything I could do about it. So I kind of had to learn by getting an element and then working my way backwards. So, so there's really this balancing act between voltage of your panels, current of your panels, and resistance of the heating element trying to get that right mix of size of panel with enough voltage to pull the wattage out of your heating element. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, please drop a comment down below and give me a thumbs up and we'll see you soon on the next one. Okay, thanks.